thank you all so much for being here. Um, so I can't tell you how excited I am about this evolving project that we have and how happy I am to be standing before you uh, here today. Uh, this project means so much to me, but more importantly, it, it really means so much to our city and moving it in the direction that we want to set our city upon. I, I just want to start by thanking some individuals who have been incredible partners in this. It's their inspiration. It's their, their, they, they've given me, uh, they've inspired me to make sure that I, as mayor, do everything possible to move this uh, project forward. And, and there's two ladies here who are my, my, my ladies of steel, and that's Lynn Ferrari and Bernadine Silver from Ciscon and the NRC. They, um, they've always been there making sure that they push and lobby for this project, not just this project, but the entire development of this entire community. Uh, and it's because of your commitment that I'm sure that we're headed towards uh, success here at the Coal Complex. I also want to thank our, our very insistent uh, developer, Larry Dooley. I remember when we were up at the governor's office initially trying to convince the governor for the, uh, was it, I think it was the roof money that we were trying to get. Was it, the, the, the David Pantagro was there, I was there, Larry Dooley, and of course the governor drives a hard bargain, so he wanted to make sure, and um, yeah, he was a little bit weak at the knee, but then he got self more confidence and didn't let Mr. Malloy uh, push him around too much and just said, we need to get this project done, we need it to get done quick. Um, so, thank you. Um, I want to really give a heart felt thanks to a man who really makes the presence of our state and of our city known in Washington, and that's Congressman John B. Larson. He is, he is just so passionate. Uh, a couple of weeks ago when we testified before Congress, and, and he of course goes first because, you know, he's the Congressman, right? I'm, I'm the one that needs to be controlled. David knows that very well. When I wanted to go all beyond my five minutes in Congress, and, and David was literally falling off his chair saying, Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> but anyway, he's been an incredible supporter, uh, Congressman Larson of our city, and he's just so passionate about this project and, and moving it forward. And um, at the last hearing, we continue to make inroads. Uh, at Washington, is not easy these days. And, and to continue to advocate and push this project forward in Washington, given the current climate, it, it's, 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 it's a challenge. But even at the last congressional hearings, we had a couple of Republican converts. Uh, I was talking to Lynn Ferrari, and she says, I take the whole thing. I couldn't believe it. He's now on board. And we're going to continue to work those votes one by one until this project becomes a reality. Um, I want to thank the state, uh, Commissioner Smith at uh, DECD, uh, and Commissioner Esty and the governor for their continued support of this project, which really means so much to us. And Mr. Lick, uh, Nick Lundgren, Director of the Department of Housing, who's also uh, uh, been involved and an incredible partner in this effort. Um, and I want to thank basically the entire Connecticut delegation, Senator Blumenthal and Senator Murphy, uh, for their tireless support. They might be joining us in a little bit. Uh, their support on behalf of our city and on behalf of this project uh, is, is very important. But but really it takes community to come together to support this and we've had some incredible tenants here and some incredible partners, uh, uh, Craig Schools, uh, Foley, Chef Harry. Uh, Chef Harry has really added spice and flavor to Coltsville and uh, he's an incredible person who, who really uh, has, has joined uh, this family. And, and last but not least I really want to thank our development staff, um, uh, our development director uh, Director of Development Services, uh, Tom Deller, and his dedicated staff, and also mention uh, our previous Director of Development and, and COO, uh, David Panagor, who was very instrumental, very instrumental in bringing all the intersecting points together very, very early on in terms of coordinating the, not only just the, this piece, but the, the, the streetscape piece, the facade piece, the roof piece, and a lot of the internal guts of this project. So I want to thank you, David, and also Tom Deller, who just is. I, I, I lured him here from Providence, telling him that I had six or seven projects for him to do. And the list has grown to about 150 things. And how he's able to put up with me and those that surround me, it's incredible. But I, I want to really thank you. So 
Uh, let's start with, with some of the facts. In 2012, as, as some of you may recall, I submitted a, a proposal uh, to allocate $5 million in bond funding for an additional 79 units here at the South Armory. Once, once done, there will be 129 apartments in the South Armory. Of the 50 that exist already, they're almost at full occupancy. So we're seeing that these, these apartments are not only doable, they're also rentable, and that we can continue to bring people into our inner city, continue to have better opportunities of housing for city residents, and uh, they're almost at full occupancy. The city of Hartford has invested over $2 million in neighborhood improvements or streetscapes since 2010, and I believe that there's more streetscapes improvements that are coming uh, that will be significant uh, to really continue to give uh, shape to this, to this, to this project. Uh, the new call complex creates a direct connection to Adrian's Landing and the District Convention and Science Center. And we've been seeing how that's taking shape and how the new tenants are moving in and more activity. I've been to Capitol Grill now a couple of times. I am gaining some weight, I promise you. I've been to Capitol Grill on, on my own dime, mind you. you know, let's not start any rumors here. Um, uh, and, and it's just incredible food. I, I can't wait for the Montana Grill and especially the seafood place. I'm a f fish and chips guy. Uh, as opposed to any of the other fancier seafoods. Um, <laughs> uh, Coltsville has over 300,000 square feet of space uh, that's occupied in, and uh, more than 1,500 employees and students. So you can see the life that's coming into this, uh, into this building. And last year, two new tenants came in, and that's Chef Harry with the Colt Caf uh, Cafe Colt and Foley Carrier. Uh, this isn't a defining investment for the city because uh, this is one of Hartford's biggest landmarks, and it's the place that's really going to tie a lot of stuff together in this region in our quest to have Coltsville declared a national park. And we are getting closer. I, I will not rest until this project is completed and our that, that national park designation is achieved. Uh, since I became mayor, I've been very, in, very vocal about preserving and improving, especially the historical assets and Hartford's legacy. And um, I couldn't but help it, sorry David, of not sticking to my speaking points when I went this second time around to Congress and went off script and basically told them that this is the city where the first written democratic constitution was written. This is the city in which all these manufacturing innovations really gave shape to the expansion of our country and we're asking for 10,000 square feet and a national park designation. I says that's the least that you folks can do for us for all that we've given to this country. And I, at that point, that's when we had the convert. And I just wanted to go on, but I know that I really shouldn't. I might as well quit while I was ahead. Um, despite the fiscal challenges that we face, we really, did new, uh, we really need to make these investments because we're not going to get out of the situation that we're in if we don't continue to invest and make wise investments that really give our city a chance towards uh, uh, tourism, uh, historical tourism, creating more livable spaces and workspaces uh, for our communities. So uh, I'm very supportive of this project. I'm very supportive and thankful of those that have joined in in partnership. Um, and more importantly, what we need to do is that we need to make sure that we see this project to its end. We need a more educated workforce in the city. We depend on CREC and our Board of Education and other educational partners to accomplish that for us. It's important to our thriving economies here that we need to continue to develop and work upon. Um, What's important is that all, all of you are represented here today. This is, this is not anyone's project in particular. This is our project. This is the city's project. We all need to continue to band together and continue to make sure that we honor the cult legacy and Hartford's history. So thank you all for your support of the capital city. And with that, I will turn it over to the other folks who I also know have a lot to say about this project. And I leave you with Mr. John Rossi from Congressman Larson's office. Thank you. Hi, John Rossi, Congressman Larson's Chief of Staff. The House was in session this week in Washington. The Congressman is just getting back uh, right about now, and he asked me to come and say a few words on this really important day. I got to start off by, th and I'm going to keep it brief. I know people are, 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 are getting a little cold, but I got I to thank the mayor. Um, during our government shutdown, uh, we had a hearing in the House in the, on the subcommittee for national parks. and. During the shutdown, on short notice, we didn't know if the hearing was going to happen. We didn't know if uh, anything was going to happen really at that point. Um, we were able to, the mayor was able to really be flexible, get down to Washington, and be really persuasive 
with the, the members of the National Park Subcommittee on both, uh, both sides of the aisle uh, to tell the story of Coltsville with the congressman. He did an excellent job. Some of you I know watched it. Um, I sent out a link, but uh, it was really a great moment. There is movement in the House where uh, I think the country thinks that not a lot uh, gets done and, and, and a lot of obstructionism happens there, but there's movement in the House for a national park process and uh, we are at the forefront of that discussion with this project with Coltsville, which is really exciting. And it's thanks to all the members of the Coltsville Ad Hoc Committee. There's so many of them that are here today, um, which is a, a process that we started in the Congressman's office over 10 years ago to advocate for this project. But I wanted just to, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention a couple of things. Um, Coltsville is, is one of the best examples in the first district of a great private state municipal and federal collaboration um, to make an area more economically vibrant. And, and, and there are so many great examples of that to point to. You can point to the, the correct investment in the schools here. You can point to Chef Harry being here, Foley Carrier Services. You can point to Insurity's commitment here. All of these things create a critical mass where people want to live here. And Colt Gateway and Larry Dooley have done an excellent job in making Coltsville everything that it can be in that capacity. And I give them all the credit for it. Um, have done a, a fantastic job. Um, so this economic activity has helped in many ways, and the city invested wisely in doing an economic evaluation of what this process, what this, pro this park would do. Um, but just in the past couple of months, I've talked to places in this community uh, that are going through a process to look at improving themselves. Uh, the Church of the Good Shepherd comes to mind. They're going to go through a process to make some improvements. And the safety of this neighborhood that's come with this, with these investments, whether it's the investment the city and the federal government and the state made in Dutch Point, or whether it's the investments that have been made here, I understand this is the second safest part of the city, in over the, in which is very, very impressive. And that's a great testament to all the people that have come together to make Coltsville a special place. And I think that's probably where I'll leave it. The congressman left a, an appropriate quote in, in the press release, and it's, an, it's needless to say, you know, there are two iron women that lead this effort here locally, and I get the honor of introducing one of them, um, Lynn Ferrari, our, our leader at CISCON. I believe you're next on the agenda. Lynn, come on up here. Thank you. I'm here with Bernadine Silvers, who is a longtime president of CISCON and a leader in really making this neighborhood a, a vital place to, to live and work. Um, I, I can't even begin to tell you how important the Coltsville project is to the Siscon neighborhood. That's the Sheldon Tartar Oak neighborhood. Um, above and beyond the fact that this Coltsville industrial district is more than 76% of our neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's just such a, a, a vital part of the everyday workings and, and the ability for um, people to live here and uh, work successfully. Um, you know, those of us who have uh, worked on creating uh, livable neighborhoods and um, planning for the future of our neighborhoods talk about livable, sustainable communities all the time, and, uh, as all planners do. And the fact that the, the city is investing $5 million in, in a project to complete the uh, apartments in the South Armory, and to complete the South Armory is just amazing. I mean, that goes a long way toward making this neighborhood and this development a sustainable neighborhood. And uh, there are just so many people to be thanked over the years, and um, but I'd be woefully It, Larry Dooley is just in, such an incredible um, developer and he's been so good with the neighborhood. He's planned with us from the very beginning and um, without Larry I don't think that we'd be anywhere near as, as close to completion as we are. So I thank everybody and, and TCI Chevron, uh, Chevron TCI who's been with us from the very beginning and um, has uh, had a lot of faith in Larry and continues to stand at our side to make this a successful project. Thank you. And not to put him on the spot, but Mr. Larry Dooley. <laughs>
I'm not sure if I'm blushing or just freezing. Um, but, uh, you know, this project, uh, when I took over as a managing member of this project in August of 2006, uh, with uh, my investor partner, Chevron, uh, we immediately sat down with uh, not only the governor, Congressman Larson's office, the state and the city, and we said, how are we gonna make this happen? How are we going to fix this project? Because I can tell you at that time, it was broken. And everybody challenged each other at that table to step up and make it happen. And I can tell you, you can see, obviously that is happening, but the plan that we put together is working. It takes a partnership. All the stakeholders have to be part of it. So uh, the state in the form of DCD stepped up in a big way. Obviously, the city of Hartford has stepped up in a big way. My investor partner stepped up in a big way. And I tried to manage it the best that I could all the way through the process. I will continue to do so. I can just say it's an absolute honor and a privilege to be part of this project. And I'm just part of it. Uh, I also want to obviously thank the support of SISCON, our neighborhood group. Uh, they have just been incredible. And they say I go and ask, I mean, I go to them for advice. They help me to figure out how to develop this project and what is right for this community. Our tenants that have stood by us through thick and thin, especially in surety, I will say, they've been through some hard times and stuck with this project. And when I took it over, said, hey, we'll sign up for some more time because we believe in you. We believe that you're going to finish this project. Had Craig School come in the biggest of ways, come in and invest in this project, believe in this project, believe in what we were doing. And uh, you have Foley Carrier Services, who was uh, initially David Wendell came in from that company, saw this place. I saw the light in his eyes when he looked at the dome, and he had to be here. He had to have his company here. All of the players that we have, Think It, Drink It here now, it's established himself as a great up and coming company. Um, I'm going to forget somebody. I'm trying not to. I don't think so. But Chef Harry. Most important. Chef Harry, of course. Chef Harry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chef, Chef Harry certainly brought food and life to this project that we desperately needed. And it's a beautiful thing and that, that relationship will continue and will grow. But most of all, and I'm looking at one of them right now, I will thank our residential tenants for sticking with us through thick and thin. We do have 50 apartments, they are filled up, they're beautiful. But they are really the true heroes of this project and just sticking with it and keeping with us and believing. And so I think we're getting closer. I'm always cautious, but we just continue to take steps to make this place better. So thank you everybody for coming. And um, Craig is becoming a more significant uh, tenant uh, at Coltsville. Our city and its youth face critical educational needs and challenges. And as both mayor and as a member of the Board of Education, I am committed to strengthening the partnership with Craig. We have the same goals in mind, and there's no reason why we can't have a closer and stronger working relationship. And that relationship has been strengthened, I think, by that presence <laughs> of Craig here at, uh, at Coltsville. So I want to call, uh, call Donald Walsh, who is the executive uh, Deputy Director of uh, Craig Schools. Uh, I, for one, think we're being entirely too nice to Larry, but that's just <laughs> that's just me. Um, uh, I'm here on behalf of our Executive Director Bruce Douglas, who's who's in the air on his way back from Montana. Wishes he could have been here, uh, and I will only say this because I'm freezing, and I'm sure you are too. We are very grateful to be here. We are very grateful, we continue to be very grateful uh, for the professionalism of Hartford's development staff, which has guided us through this process um, every step of the way. Uh, everything we do here, everything we will do here, is for Hartford school children. If we can help the city of Hartford uh, with our physical improvements and uh, manufacture taxpayers, on this uh, beautiful campus, well, then we're doing our job, and we're, we're proud to be able to uh, 
earning a living saying we do stuff like that. So thank you very much, uh, Mayor. We appreciate the opportunity you've given us and look forward to doing more of it. And um, do we have someone here from Senator Blumenthal's office? Do you want to go past? Sen Senator Blumenthal has introduced a bill at the Senate for Coltsville National Park, uh, reintroduced a bill actually. As you know, every, with every session that goes by, we constantly find ourselves uh, reintroducing these bills, but each time that that's done, it's done with more passion, with more support. So I want to thank the Senator and uh, for all the support in reintroducing the bill. If I have to go back to Washington a thousand times, I'll go back because this is going to get done one way or another. Um, at this point, if there's any questions from the media, if not, we will retire to uh, the comfort of the interior space so that... Uh, um, I don't know how many of you have gotten to see these apartments, but they're beautifully designed spaces to live. And the offices, for those of you who have been over at Insurator, Insurity and over at uh, Carrier, I mean, these are, these are really uh, well-designed spaces, very comfortable, very nice, that really honor students, workers, and, and, and the residents that live here uh, with some really quality uh, space. So thank you for all your leadership, and I look forward towards completing the entire cultural project along with your help. Thank you.